Frost stripes and bright stars fill the perilous flight. Over the rail parts we watch, we're so gallantly streaming. And the rocket stragglers, the balls bursting in air, keep room through the night. Thank you very much for doing that, Mr. Ball. Thank you. There is one out on a strikeout. Mash your your pitcher out there. Bells Falls Post 37 is at the plate. This is a, a league matchup. It's a big matchup. It's all the games are important from now on for league standings. That'll be high. And that was a beautiful job of singing the national anthem by Marina Rotella. She did a great job. What a thrill and a privilege for all the fans here to have a live national anthem. There's a strike call. There's one down. Nobody on top of the first scheduled for seven. Second meeting of the year between Bellows Falls post 37 in those yellow uniforms. And of course the red, white, and blue of post 31. Matt Sharon, Anthony LaPlaca, beautiful pitch. Two, he's faced two hitters. He's got two strikeouts. And of course Rutland coming off a win on the road against Hartford. A team that had beaten them here at St. Peter's Field earlier in the year. And that was a big win up in Hartford. And I'll tell you what, I take a national anthem like that every night. That really gets me fired up. Going into second grade, of course, your dad's Mike Rotella, rolling Rotella building and bath and kitchen designs down there. And a local guy, got roots right here in Rutland. And it's nice to see the next generation of Rotellas coming up through right here in Rutland and doing something as nice as the national anthem before the American Legion Post 31 game. And that's going to be followed out of play. Sharon pitching from up in the count on to his third hitter. He's 0-2 in the count here. He has two strikeouts. And I should tell you, this is Isaac Bizzle up. And I think I've caught up now. The only downside was I had to go from home plate, where I was going handheld with a camera, to run up here. To, well, running would be an exaggeration. I walked fast to get up here to the bleacher spot in the football press box so I can tape the game now. You only missed one, one strikeout. So it's a 1-2 count now, Matt Sharon. Number 22 for post 31. That's going to be up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. And that'll be runner on first with one down. And there is a breeze tonight. Rather strong one blowing from home base right out to center field. Now a guy with a lot of power, their catcher, Matt Eisenhuth. And yeah, he's had a, a at least a two, home, two home runs I know of this season. But he's a guy with a lot of Deuce juice and a bat, and he's up there with two down and run around first. And they put a little extra steps in their outfielders, they extend the outfield. So, from the stretch for the first time, oh, and what a breaking ball! There's Matt Sharon. Actually, I believe that was a change up and went to that uh, speed pitch in the opening sequence here and got a string swinging strike one. Runner going nice scoop by the placa, throw down to Parker, and he's going to be safe. So they'll put a runner in scoring position now with two down. That pitch called the ball. We're 1-1 one, one in the count. And in case you haven't heard it, the July 22nd game against New Jersey, that doubleheader has been canceled. New Jersey doesn't want to come up to our beautiful state for uh, just a uh, one-day affair, even though it's going to be two games. Uh, great, great pitch. The yeah, Adam looking for a fastball through him. The curveball, and that's something that him and pitching coach Jeff Brewer have been working on, and it's been working out well. So two strikes now. He's got a one-two count. You're watching Peg TV, Channel 15. And that looks like John Holtman's going to make the catch for the third out, and he will. They'll strand one. will be scoreless after a half inning of play. On the first, we'll have the leadoff hitter up. That's going to be, of course, Rob Dory, and he'll be facing Bill Sisko. 
So Rob Dorian will have a strike one count on him, and one is the count. Okay, I'm just trying to get all my camera wires taped down as I was a late arriver from home base up here to center field, and looks like we're good to go now. Cisco going to come inside and hit Dorian on the fanny, and that'll be a hit batter. And he throws a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. And he last pitched against Hartford, won that game 10 to 2. So we will see what he will do now with a runner on at first base. Matt Sharon up there again, good combination. Dorian at first with good speed, and Sharon at the plate, handles the bat well, and got good speed himself. He'd be a very difficult guy to double up on this uh, on a ground ball that isn't hit extremely hard. We're in the bottom of the first in Rutland. Looking for the season sweep of Bellows Falls Post 37. And in case you miss it, just keep watching that schedule for this game replay on Channel 15. And if you don't have access to a computer, go to the website pegtv.com. You can go to Sam's Good News and see the schedule of Channel 15, Channel 20, Channel 21. And you can listen to the national anthem being sang by Marina Rotella. Did a magnificent job. That's going to be fouled out of play. Now it'll be a 1 2 count. The on deck hitters, Jeff McLaughlin. Well, Plaque will hit in the cleanup spot tonight again for post 31. So Cisco on a very hot, very humid, very sunny night. And that's going to be a foul ball. And it looks like Steve Barrow behind home base. Tim Barrett out in the field. That's your umpires for tonight's game. And. We're scoreless, but Rutland trying to do something about that right now as they, uh, that will tail a little bit too far outside. Okay, I do an audio check because my headset's old and I can't always hear myself talk and I'm thinking, boy, you guys are thinking the same thing. I'd like to have that feature myself. And that's going to be a number, and that's going to be a tough play. He's got one play, and that's going to be the first. And thanks to the stretch, they will get it. What a great hustle play by Cisco to get to the ball and then throw over to first base where Warner Clark is. So that works kind of like a uh, sacrifice. Now runner at second with one downs, Dorian and McLaughlin at the plate. Again, post 37 from Bellows Falls. Right in the playoff hunt, as is Brattleboro, Chester, Rutland, Bennington. Hartford's, on, Hartford's right there. Ch and uh, Bellows Falls right there. And that's going to be over to second base. They'll get the runner to third. They'll flip to first. There's two down as that goes 4 3 from Whitcomb to Clark. And Dorian now just one base away from being able to come home with the game's first run. Now the plaque up, two down though, and the plaque of the catchers logged a lot of hours this year behind the dish, been hitting the ball well, especially the early part of the season, the first three or four home games, he was really making good contact, and he's kind of gotten back in that groove again now as of late. Rutland Knicks on their schedule will be a uh, busy weekend. We're taped late. This is Thursday night, but they'll be heading down to Chester to finish that extra inning game that was tied at two at the end of 10. So they'll be going there and start that 11th inning to con see if they can get a win there. And then they will finish that game up and do a nine inning game. And then we'll have him here on channel 15 as we'll watch his pitch come in. As he gets it to the gap and that could be trouble and it looks like it's gonna land and gonna roll and that's gonna score the game's first run. And LaPlaca looking for yet another double this season will come into second base standing up. So LaPlaca will have an RBI and a double to the left center field gap and that's where he's done a lot of his damage this season, which means he's been able to pull the ball. Now Aquista pace up, Zach Aquista pace is DHing for Pat Guyette, the shortstop. And a Quista pace, big righty up there. We'll have that in there low for a ball. So the plaque, like I said, that's his fourth double here at home. And he's had a couple on the road. He's been hitting with some power and authority this year. Been picking up the RBIs, piling them up. 
And now, whether or not it's a, uh, because there's a runner at second, they want to change up the signs, or there's confusion on what they want to get together and call, but we're going to have a meeting between Eisenhut, the catcher, and Sistico, the pitcher. So this is a wide open race every year, but especially this year, there's really no clear cut favorite, I wouldn't think. Now, if you saw the second Greenville Rutland game, you would think Rutland would be out of the running, but that just was one awful game, and hopefully they got that out of their system. They came back the next night and won at Hartford. That's going to be a base hit in the placa. That's down the first baseline. You can see him getting waved in, looking like he's going to have the game's second run, and he will on an RBI by Zach Acquisted Pace. There's the big guy right there. Yeah, he got around and Got that to the opposite field. And now Chris Parker up, the second baseman, where's number 16, bats from the right side. and Got Quista Pace at first. Parker then makes contact with the ball. Very seldom you see him striking out. And Cisco dropped down almost three quarters to full sidearm there. And didn't get the call his way, and it'll be one ball, no strikes. Two runs in here in the bottom of the first for post 31 of Rutland. Sorry, so we're gonna have the Brattleboro doubleheader game on the 16th here of July, which means you'll be seeing it the week of the 16th on Channel 15. That's crucial, that's big, that's a doubleheader. And Rob, that's a swing and a miss, great cut action. That's the slider right there. But uh, you've seen Rob Turner, Coach Sorelli said, he'll be getting the start in the top part of that doubleheader, and it's still to be determined who will start the second game. And will miss outside, so Parker will work the count, the three balls, one strike. So La Placa and Aquista Pace with RBIs here. Makes it two to nothing, and Parker will jet down to first base on that walk, and it'll push Aquista Pace to second. We've had a hit batter, a double, a single, and now a walk. Now Garrett Brewer up for Rutland as they've gone deep into the order here. They're in their number seven hitter with two down. Rutland with two league losses, an eight to five loss here at St. Peter's Field to Hartford. And then just a uh, drubbing 17 to nine down to Bennington in Bennington. Again, probably their three worst games, the second Granville game, the second Bennington game, And the Hartford game here, swing and a miss on a fastball. We'll make it one and one. Again, St. Peter's Field with a muted sun right now on it, and the temperature's climbing. It was, it's going to be warmer by the fifth inning, then they'll start to cool down, and a swing and a miss. Good pitch right there by Cisco on back-to-back -back fastballs to make it one and two. And then for the Sunday's doubleheader here, it's supposed to be in the 90s, so we'll have summer sport and summer weather for you. And nice idea, just missed them too far outside, and I'll go to a 2-2 count. And again, Marina Rotella singing a national anthem. I don't know what the deal is. I, I'd like to see her do it again. For the, There's, what, three more home games left. That'd be a, I think that's a nice touch. Real community feel to it. Oh, threw him the change up and got him, but Rutland will play two. They'll lead Two to nothing at the end of one inning of play on channel 15. And we're going to be looking at Bell's Falls with their number five hitter, Warner Clark, Chris Foner, and then Bill Cisco do up here. They've had two strikeouts and a base hit in that first inning. They're down two to nothing as we go to the top of the second. Matt Sharon's on the mound. Anthony LaPlaca is behind the plate. And I'll do the defense for you. Something I didn't get a chance to do in that first inning. That's going to be called a strike. Garrett Brewer is over at first base defensively. Chris Parker, of course, is your second baseman. Pat Guyette getting a start at short, and Jeff McLaughlin is at third base. And the second pitch in the sequence will be ripped on a rope and going to good diving attempt by McGuire. It's going to get by him, though, and that's going to allow the runner to go to at least second, and that's where he's going to pull up with that double to start things off. That's a do-or-die play right there. If you don't come up with it, it turns into at least a double. Chris Fainer up. I'm sorry, I got his name wrong. So Fainer is up with a runner at second base in scoring position. Sharon will go to the stretch again. He's got two strikeouts. That's a great pitch. Like to take this time to say hi to big Dave Pamakala. 
and Tom Laplaca, Dr. Tom Laplaca, passed both those guys while I was coming out here to the bleacher area. Big supporters of Munger Vision and Legion Baseball. Well, too bad he missed high right there. He completely fooled and froze in the hitter, but it'll be a 1 1 count. So Fainer is the tying run at the plate. He's got the first run of the game sitting at second base for Bellows Falls. They're in the yellow uniforms, and you're watching American Legion Post 31 baseball action on Channel 15 Munger Vision. And again, if you need to schedule for Peg TV, which includes Channel 15, Channel 20, and Channel 21, Sam's Good News has all three schedules. Go right to the website and see the schedules at pegtv.com. And that'll be a ball inside. And Dr. Frank Quist Pace also gave me the big thumbs up coming out here to the uh, football press box, which ironically during football season I'm not allowed to be in it. <laughs> and that'll be Dinker Fall. So a full count now with Cisco on deck, Fainer at the plate, Clark at second base. Holtman's in right field, John Holtman, Rob Doring's in center, and Sean McGuire is out there in left field. Now that diving attempt by McGuire is the type of play we've seen him ha make happen many, many times. And that's going to be toward the hole, and it's going to be picked up. There it is. Okay, McLaughlin will eat it. Runner will stay at second. Great range by McLaughlin there. And probably, definitely saved the runner from advancing to third base from second to third. So first and second now on a double and a single. Now Cisco can give his team the lead. So we're in the top of the second. Rutland picking up two runs in the bottom of the first. Nice pitch by Matt Sharon. Of course, Matt Sharon, remember, wasn't here for the Granville second game. He was at uh, college orientation. But he is a big component to the success of post 31. And boy, there's a mistake right there. It's going to be picked up by Dorian, and he's going to eat the ball, and that'll be runners moving up to second and third. I'm not really sure what to call that. I mean, it's an error, obviously, but I'm not sure what happened there. I know that was to avoid a Bach. Or if he's trying to hit the, the backup man from behind. I'm not, uh, in, any, in any case, it makes the runners at second and third and nobody down. And that's going to be the shortstop, and Guyette will set his feet and get nobody. That's going to tie the game up at two. They should get the runner from third will be awarded home. And that will be, boy, again, uncharacteristic of what we see when post 31 is clicking. It's usually very good defense, so back-to-back -back errors will bring up Zach Whitcomb with a chance to give Bellows Falls a lead and the runner down at second is Cisco. And Whitcomb, a right-handed hitter. And remember, there was a diving attempt on the first single. Ball got by, and there's the bunt. Sharon's going to go for the out, and there's the first out of the inning, and it's a good sacrifice as the runner goes to third base now. And now the number nine hitter, Travis Medor. And then on top of the order, Austin Delange up. So Sharon with a runner at third, and it is two to two right now. And it has been. Now that was a great effort by McGuire, but the ball got by him and the backup didn't get behind him in time. That allowed that single to become a double. Then the error on Sharon on the pickoff attempt the ill-fated pickoff attempt at second base, and then the error at short. So mistakes always come to get you, whether it's right at this moment or later in the game, but it's no two count, and Sharon with two strikeouts coming back in the first inning. We'd love to get a strikeout here would really be a big plus for post-31, change the complexion of this disastrous inning and minimize damage. It'll only be the second out, I know, but the pitch missed high. He just tried to blast a fastball by him. It'll be one ball, two strikes. Again, down at third base is Bill Sisko, the pitcher. Well, he actually, he's he got the hit, and now the little that'll come that. And Sharon's going to come home, and that's a tag play. Yeah, and he's going to get him great job. Nice composure by Sharon and LaPlaca now becoming one-three-four out. 
And that's a fielder's choice from a door. And that's a good decision because you never know how these things are going to turn out. It's 2-2 two, two, two now. It looks like it's going to be runs throughout the game. But that Bennington game down he, that played right here at St. Peter's Field, remember, it was 2-1 at the end of, end of the first inning. And that's the way it stayed all the way through. So, so top of the order, he, this is DeLonge up, and he struck out. And he's only played appearance. He's got a runner at first. Two down now, though, and 2-2 two, two the score. We're in the top of the second. Bells Falls, post 37, in the yellow uniforms at the plate, taking on the red, white, and blue of Rutland, post 31. Runner going, great pitch to throw on, and it's going to come, and good night. Shows him the ball, and Chris Parker with a, from a beautiful throw from La Placa will end the inning, but two runs will tie it up at two. Sean McGuire up to lead things off. He's number eight hitter in the lineup. Then John Holtman will bat next. And then top of the order, Rob Doring up. Rutland picking up a couple runs in the bottom of the first. Taking another look at Cisco here as we go to the bottom of the second. And again, Cisco fastball slider change up. That's just a ball right there inside. Good ball player. If he's not pitching, you usually see him at shortstop. He's what you call a gamer. That's a good pitch. And you can see now the sun peeking in and out. Now the clouds again, very warm start time temperature wise, very warm temperature at the start of the game. And the breeze, when it's blowing, it's coming from home base right out to center field. And that's a hitter's delight right there. Bells Falls, they have Warner Clark at first, Sackwick from playing second, Austin DeLong's at short. And Chris Fainer is at third. And that'll be outside. He won't get him to nibble at it. And that'll be a 3-1 count. In the outfield's Kyle Mack, Isaac Bizzle, and Travis Medor. Of course, catchers, Matt Eisenhuth out there. Oh, and he did just the Cardinal sin there. He let the leadoff batter get on. And this is via the walk. And McGuire will be at first base now. John Holtman. And Holtman having just a solid, solid season for post-31. Got to pitch a little bit in the Granville game. I thought he did an excellent job. Very rock solid out in right field defensively, and he's been effective at the plate. And that'll be way outside. Nice and with a nice job of grabbing it, keeping it from being a wild pitch. Now McGuire at that particular pitch right there, on that particular pitch right there, didn't show any signs of attempting a steal. He's taking a little bit bigger lead right now. When that curveball is too far outside and tell you what if you're going to steal on a pitch that would have been an ideal slow getting to the plate type of pitch right there with a 1-1 one -one count though you, I doubt you would see back to back change ups like that so if you're thinking steal here you're probably going to be looking at the fastball coming into the hitter and it's going to be a strike it's two balls one strike Again, McGuire saying pretty much down there at first base with a four to five step lead. Right now he's at four. I just counted him off the bag. And they did try to bunt. That's going to be popped up. And so a little trickery backfires on post 31. They went to get the bunt. And now didn't advance the runner. It wastes the bat. It's one down. Runner on first and Rob Dorian up. He was hit by a pitch and then eventually came around to score on Anthony LaPlaca's double. Matt Sharon will be the on-deck hitter. And that's a good pitch. Right on the outside corner and he'll be up in the count. No balls, one strike. We so every game from this point on for post 31, Gonna put the pedal to the metal. They're all Southern Vermont League games. I already mentioned this weekend they'll play Chester. Two games basically. It's the completion of a game started here, then Darkness came in the 11th inning, they called it. And then the original nine inning game that was scheduled for that day. That's fouled straight down in the dirt at home base. And then Sunday I'll be here doing the doubleheader with Brattleboro, which is a Southern Vermont League game. And you'll see that at a later date on Channel 15. Yeah, I mean, it's just all league matchups from this point on. And what you want to do is be one of the four teams that qualifies for the postseason and 
You want to win as many as you can, play your best every game, but as we've seen over the last several years and actually throughout the decades, that number one seed sometimes comes with a curse. And boy, he went fishing on a slider and I don't think he fouled it off. They had no call from the umpire and McGuire will go down to second base out. It's going to be a strikeout, but the runner will move down. Now Matt Sharon up as Dorian strikes out for the second strikeout of the game. Brewer struck out also. Now Matt Sharon up. He grounded out to Bill Sisko, the pitcher. Two down, and Sharon, nice job of holding up on that pitch. Sisko featured an awful lot of first pitch change-ups through two innings of work. You don't see that a lot. And that was a great, that was a great pitch. 1-1 one, one now, the count, and again, McGuire started this whole inning off with a walk, but there's been two outs now between that and Sharon at the plate. And that's going to be an RBI, I think. Yeah, they're going to just wave him around. No, they're going to put the brakes on home at third base. So first and third, a nice throw out there, and a good decision by third base coach Jeff Brewer to hold him up. And that came from Travis Mador, that throw right there. Now McLaughlin, who grounded down to second base, Whitcomb, who threw it to first base, Clark. So first and third, and two down. Now we'll see if they want to. They are going to hold the runner on defensively. Clark will go down and hold the runner, Sharon, on. But see if they want to send Sharon, try to draw the throw, or if they'll just concede second base to him. I know McLaughlin's a good hitter, makes contact a lot, but I believe in getting the game going here, getting things started on a base pass. 2-2 to score, we're in the bottom of the second. Rutland scoring first, two runs in the bottom of the first, and then Bells Falls with a little help from Rutland. Mistakes tying things up at 2-2 in the top of the second. Cisco trying to get out of this jam right now and keep everything tied up. After a little break, that's going to be a fall ball. We're right down in the Netting behind home base is McLaughlin now with two strike count. And Sharon pretty much stayed pretty glued to first base. McGuire's at third. And Heisenhoof sets the target up outside and that looks like it's going to be caught and it will. It will be caught and Medora will make the third out and Rutland will strand two base runners who so will stay tied at two going into the third. So Austin DeLong, remember he was up when they threw Medora out trying to steal. That's going to be bunted down and LaPlaca, the only guy with a play, will throw and get him. Boy, that's just good hustle. He got out of that crouch, got to the, see how he lined himself up just an extra step so he had a better line to throw down to first base. So they take care of the leadoff batter. Now Kyle Mack up, he struck out back in the first. We're in the third in the game, got a nice pace to it. We're tied at two, and each team really needing this win. And you say it for every game, but I mean, there are teams who mathematically pretty much are already out of the playoff picture. These two teams aren't two of those teams, so this is going to be down a third baseline and foul. McLaughlin will just pick it up and toss it back in. Of course, Channel 15, glad to be part of the community. And glad to be part of bringing you American Legion post-31 baseball action yet again this year on Munger Vision. Well, I just overpowered him. Just reared back and said, here's my muscle. I'm Popeye. Hit the ball. One to the count. He's already got, like I said, Matt's got two strikeouts so far in the game. Both of those coming to the first inning, the first two hitters of the ball game. And there's number three. And boy, he pulled the string on that. That was a beautiful pitch. So Max struck out twice now. And that'll bring up Bissell, Isaac Bissell. And he has singled in a first and stole the base, got stranded at second. He's a lefty, and he'll put a little bit of a shift off. Not a big poppy Dave Ortiz type shift, but a little bit of a shift toward the right field line. That pitch will be too far outside. He's trying to keep away from him, and it'll be ball one. So two down here, nobody on base, and that defense still has Brewer defensively at first. Parker at second, guy at short, and McLaughlin, that's a strike. And at third, the black we've already mentioned, uh, the catcher, Holtman. Dorian and McGuire. That is the outfield. And of course, that's Matt Sharon out there on the plate, or on the mound, actually trying to throw to the plate, and that's going to be a ball. Two balls, one strike. 
the on-deck hitter for Bells Falls is Matt Eisenhuth. And if you're going to face Eisenhuth, you'd like to be with the bases empty at the top of the fourth, not right here with the runner on. And that's going to be, oh, just under the glove. Almost hit Sharon in the rear, and then it was just under the glove of Guyette, and they'll have just what they didn't want. There's the base runner. So Eisenhuth will come up with two down and a runner on first base. So Bissell has two singles in the ball game. That's right, the cleanup spot, number four hitter in that Bells Falls roster. Again, Channel 15 brings you their website with all the information on it. PayTV.com. Their phone number is 747-0151. And if you got a lot of ambition and a little free time, you can drive right down to the house center to Building 24 and go right inside and meet Tom Leipold, Mike Valentine, Chris McCormick, Bob Gregory, Nancy Donahue, Gary Chambers might be there. And they'd be glad to give you a tour of the facility and try to recruit you into being part of public access television. One ball, no strikes. Throw to first was late, you could see. And Sharon got a big hitter right here. This is a big out to get. Oh, they called the pitch out, and the throw is going to hit. Got him. Got him. Beautiful. They called it, and a sweep tag helped out that catcher's high throw. But boy, that's just having a gut instinct. We'll stay tied at two. So, a guy leading off here with already a big night going with the glove. Anthony LaPlaca, the catcher, who has thrown two runners out trying to steal. He's two for two tonight. And he's got a double and an RBI, and he's having a big night, and he'll swing through that. And that was a slider, and it's going to be an 0-1 count. His, uh, if you go back to that last inning, though, I mean, it was a great gut instinct for calling the pitch out, whether they saw something from the dugout of Bell's Fall, that's going to be a ball outside, 1-1 to count, or if they just went with the count, looked at the count, and tried to gifts a pitch out but it's beautiful and again he's two for two throwing runners out he's got a double and an rbi and why not start off with a hit here that'll be fouled out on a river street and it'll be out of play and right now like i said the sun playing peekaboo throughout the game with the clouds right now it's a nice muted sky fielder sky got a good ball game in the bottom of third two two rutland got that's you can call that one that's a ball so he goes to a pitch a little bit high now. The strike zone right there. Make it two ball, two strikes. In the bottom of the first, Rutland able to get two runs together. They had a hit batter, a double, a single, and a walk, and that's what scored their runs. And then Rutland, the top of the second, got a little sloppy in the field, and Bells Falls able to get back in it and tie it at two. And did he fall that off? He must have got a piece of it. Because if that's strike three, he never ran to first base, so he he must have fouled it. So we stay at 2-2. Two, two. The only reason I question is because I didn't hear that. Usually you hear that ting of the metal bat on the foul ball, and I didn't hear the ting, but I am getting up there in years where I don't hear a lot of tings anymore. And that's a good defensive two-strike swing to stay alive. Well, I already mentioned Eisenhuth and Cisco is the battery for Bells Falls. Clark's at first defensively. Whitcomb is at second. DeLong is at short. Fainer is at third. Mac, Bissell, and Medora, the outfield. That's the original lineup staying out there for Bellows Falls. Ball on the placa, same results. Put it right out in the gap, and that's going to hit and roll to the wall, and we'll pick Anthony chugging along, and he'll go to second base with yet another double. And that's how he started out the season. Like I said, the first three games that I cover here at home, he had at least a double in each game plus some other hits. Just missed a home run twice, hitting it off the wall a couple times. But he's found his stroke again. He's made a few adjustments and he's stroking the ball. Now Quist to pace up, who had a single and an RBI. And that's gonna be a strike into Big Zach. Yeah, so the RBIs tonight belong to La Placa and a Quist to pace and they're trying to keep that streak alive right here. Quist to pace, held up. That was high, even for a quiz to pay, so it'll be one ball, one strike. That's a nice, that breeze that's blowing out. I'll tell you what, I don't get a lot of air circulation up here in the booth. Nice grab by Eisenhuth behind the plate. But it's gusting to the point where it's actually blown in my face, and I could get right down and kiss the floor for that. <laughs> it's hot and humid in this 
sweat box. You ever see the movie Cool Hand Luke with Paul Newman? It's old, but I am too. That's going to be a ball. Try to bust him inside. Remember how that movie starts off and they take Paul Newman and he's in prison and they take him out of the sweat box? That's what it's like being up here in his press box for, soft for baseball because it's, it's just a catch-all, bake-all oven. That's going to be swung on and missed straight back on the strike. And Aquista Pace will work it to a full count. Or Cisco actually will work it to a full count. I like the fact that Aquista Pace had the opportunity to swing at a 3-1 count on the pitch that was right in his uh, power zone right there. Of course, I'm overweight and old now of shape, so a little sweating wouldn't hurt me. Sweat off a few ounces tonight. That'll be a ball, and I'll put base runners at first and second. And Chris Parker up, he walked back in the first inning. He's getting his second look at Cisco. Now, Cisco's got a little funky delivery where he kind of got a little hitch, but he comes three quarters to sidearm, and maybe now the second time through the lineup, this will help Parker pick the ball up the release point a little bit more and time his swing. He's a very good hitter, very good fielder, just a nice guy. He's on Sports Beat. You can catch Sports Beat with Chris Parker, or if you miss Chris Parker, there's other Sports Beats coming up. But it's on Mondays at 4.30. It's a show on Channel 15. It's over a decade now on Channel 15. But it's Mondays at 4.30 in the afternoon, Tuesdays at 5.30 in the afternoon, and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. It's had the toughest time slots in its run. Oh, he just overpowered him. That was the heater. Like I said, Chris Parker was uh, gracious enough to come and sit in and, and do an interview with me and got uh, Dominic Dunges from high school, one of the soccer captains up there talking to me. And that's going to be down to the shortstop who backhands it and there's one and they'll take the lead runner out. So it'll be a fielder's choice for Parker. There'll be a force out at third base. The Quista pace goes to second. And Garrett Brewer, who struck out on that changeup, will be up there now with runners at first and second, one down. And again, Brewer and Aquista Pace, a bad combination for a ground ball. That's a they're good double play combo, but also Brewer, kind of guy who can jack it out of the yard, too. So. And that's going to be Eisenhuth, who's got a very strong and accurate arm. Ball right below him to get far away. It's like a goose laying an egg. He found it right below him. No, on January 23rd, this past January, I started what began my 11th year in community service and public access television. That's going to be a fall ball back. Now, I didn't always do this. A lot of times I would run the camera for other people who spoke. Or I'd run a camera like, uh, well, like in 96, the uh, debates for state senate and senate that they held up at the, Ru the Rutland High School cafeteria. I worked with... Uh, I was one of the camera guys on that, so I know you didn't see me or know I was there, but I was involved in public access. And big swing and a miss, great location on that pitch. You know, I've also produced shows and directed them, and as well as stood in front of the camera and, and you know, not only came up with the concept, but did the actual in front of the camera work. And like this, where I run the camera and film the game and talk. That'll be low and outside. Do, now I do all my own editing. My son did it for many years, but darn thing, he grew up, got his own life, moved away. Two to the count, one down. Brewer with a chance to give Rutland back the lead. No, got him almost the same pitch that got him the first time. He's got two strikeouts now and two plate appearances. Now Sean McGuire, who has walked, and his only time up. And Rutland does not want to squander this opportunity here in the bottom of the third. Scheduled for seven, it's a league matchup, and they need to start stringing some league wins together. They got a tough, tough road. I trip to Chester, Brattleboro coming here. Bellows Falls is a good team. And I call a ball. The on-deck hitter is Holtman. Well, McGuire like that. That was that change up because you can see it kind of drop down at the last 18 inches on its way to the plate. Now make it a 1 1 count. Oh, you get a pitcher who throws a good change up there, Dick. It can be devastating that pitch, a change up can be. Speaking of devastating, we know Rob Turner is going to get to start in game one against Brattleboro. I'll be here unless I get fired. I'll be here and be carrying up for you. That'll be a fun one to watch. Great stop by Eisenhuth. 
Not really a conventional stop, but he got out there and got the job done. The ball didn't get past him, the catcher I'm talking about, and it goes to two balls, one strike. And I've already mentioned this before, but I'm going to do it again because it's my production. I can do that. I'll be outside for a ball. The first weekend of November, the really big show 11 for the United Way, a fundraiser for the United Way, will be held at the Paramount Theater in downtown Rutland. Now, last year, the MC, Sam Grusso, his request or wish was that they could fill that theater up. Well, he came within 50 seats or less of doing that, getting that done. I'm giving you plenty of notice now. It's the first weekend of November. You got all of the rest of July, you got August, September, October to know about this. Get your tickets. It goes to a great cause, the Rutland County United Way. It's great entertainment. It's singing, dancing, comedy. I mean, all kinds of good stuff. That's fall ball. It's McGuire, good job right there. It makes it full count, 3-2. But uh, get, get down here to that. If you know, Even if you go and watch the Big Show 11 in person, it's going to be on Channel 15 a ton of times. Watch it over and over and over and over and over. And he'll work the count to a walk, and I can't believe I just wanted to know where that was. That was low and outside, and that's going to be ball four. And that will load the bases up for Holtman. So McGuire has walked twice this afternoon, or evening now. And then on a bunt attempt, Holtman popped up, and Cisco, the, cat, the pitcher, made the catch. So that'll be high, and there's nowhere to put him on a walk. And you can bet Holtman's going to be really focused and really buckled down here on this sequence of pitches. He's got a chance to give Rutland back the lead in a 2-2 game. Great job by Eisenhuth going out there. Goes to 2-0. If you're a gambling guy or like to think ahead and account and anticipate, so that's the word, you've got to be thinking fastball. That's why a changeup from the pitcher would be nasty right here. But we'll see what he comes in with. He came pure heat and hit him. Yep. He just challenged him with the fastball and hit him, and that will force in the run from third. Quista Page scores, 3-2 to two Rutland. That is the second hit batter. Remember, he hit Rob Dorian, the first batter of the ballgame for post-31. And now Dorian up. He's been hit by a pitch, and he struck out, and there's still two down, and the bases are loaded. 3-2 to two Rutland, and coach coming out for Bellows Falls to have a chat with Bill Sisko. We're only in the bottom of the third here. Now, I can't believe they'd be talking. Well, you never know what Coach Sorelli from Rutland's up to. You know, I think they're probably just talking about there's two down. Concentrate on the hitter. I don't think they're talking about a squeeze play here being being put on. You know, you, well, Parker, I don't know if I'd squeeze with him. But also at the plate, Dorian. I let Rob swing away here, but there could be also the amount of pitches what he's throwing. It might be throwing too many change-ups or too many fastballs where he doesn't like the sequence or it could just be going down to kind of calm him down, make him refocus. In any event, they've had their talk. 3-2 to two Rutland in the bottom of the third over Bellows Falls and Rob Dorian, the starting center fielder at the plate, also represents the top of the batting order again for Rutland. Well, right there, it was just a dart. He just reared back through a first pitch fastball for a strike. And that's a good thing. It puts him up in the count with the bases loaded. No balls, one strike. Gives you a little maneuverability room here. That's going to be a tough play. That's going to be a tough play. And that became a run. Yeah, that was hit so slow, so choppy. And you know how fast Dorian is. He, he charged the ball and tried to barehand it down at third base. Fainer did. So Parker scores, bases stay loaded. And now Matt Sharon up. He's grounded out to the pitcher, and he's had a single. And it goes 4-2 to two Rutland. Sharon's also the pitcher for post-31. He's got the lead back and a chance to help pad it a little bit here. And then he started him off, same pitch, started him off the fastball, just like the previous batter, Dorian, but this time he'll miss outside. It'll be one ball, no strikes. Now this takes away that maneuverability when you're down in the count, and the base is loaded. And that's what he did. He came right back with another fastball, missed outside. Two balls, no strikes. I'll tell you there, when Rutland has its full complement of players, and they can put the nine players on the diamond that they would consider their, their best, strongest defensive lineup and offensive, that's a strike, 
They play awful good baseball. The Windsor game, the Bennington game here, the Chester game, you know, it's still tied technically. I mean, those, when I see that team take the field and everybody's here and everybody's healthy, I can actually see them. I know I'm a hometowner too and stuff, but I can see them legitimately winning the South, winning the state. But they need that whole core of people. And he's going to walk in another run. That'd be the second run he has walked in. This time it's McGuire. Now McLaughlin up. He's grounded out to second base and flied out to right field. And it goes to five to two. Rutland with the lead. And they're still two down. And they've hit around. This is the number ninth hitter. This is the ninth hitter to come to the plate. And that was just Cisco taking too long right there. And McLaughlin steps out of the box. He's all good to go now. You see how Cisco's gone back to the full windup with the bases loaded. There's a strike. There's pitchers that just feel comfortable, no matter if it's the stretch or the full windup. Then there's pitchers who prefer one or the other, you know, rather pitch from the full windup. Obviously, obviously Cisco does. And, you know, I, I, I believe if you felt that good about the stretch, you'd, you'd start off pitching that way. You never go to the windup. But most pitchers like the full windup. This is going to be a tough throw. Oh, he's going to drop the ball, and that's going to let another run in. It was a long throw, a slow grounder, and it's one hopped and the catch in the first baseman over there. Clark couldn't come up with it. So I gotta catch up. So Holtman comes in to score. Dorian goes to third. Sharon goes to first. McLaughlin is up or at first base. Now the placa up. He's got an RBI. He scored a run and he's hit two doubles and he's got the table set with the bases loaded. And they got a pitch to him, and this is a shot. This is a shot. This is a shot. It's going to be out of here. It's a home run off the top of the wall for La Placa. It hit the top of the wall and went out of here, and it cleared the bases. Oh, and Anthony, take your time going around. Enjoy this. He's been trying to hit one out. He came close twice, and this one is gone. And he could hear it ting out the top of the 2x4 plate on that wall and go out into St. Joseph Avenue, and he's got a 8-10, 10 to 2 game now, a grand slam. i got to go back and count that. And, boy, I'll tell you what, I think that's going to be Cisco's night. So I've got, yeah, a grand slam home run for Anthony LaPlaca. I am sorry that the camera got hot or all the white signs out there. Now, Quista pace up with a 10 to two game on La Placa's. He's got four, five RBIs and scored a run. He's thrown two runners out trying to steal. I don't know what he could do for an encore other than sing God bless America in top of the fifth inning. And I can see his dad, Doc La Placa over there on the cell phone, probably calling his wife, Linda. Tell her what their son just did is he hit a grand slam out of the ballpark and that hits a quiz to pace right between the one and the seven and in this nightmare of an inning that's a third hit batter by Cisco. And here comes Coach Lockerbie. Parker's up but it's going to be the second visit to the mound and Cisco's night will be done. He didn't quite make it to three innings. He's given up ten runs, two doubles and a grand slam home run to La Placa and he's going to Take a break. So Ben Blanchard is the new pitcher, and he's going to be looking at Chris Parker. Parker's walked and reached on a fielder's choice, and he scored a run. Starting to say on a home run, it kind of got white looking and hot. That's because the white signs, foul ball, has the sun beating on it directly, and I had my iris open because it's shadowy down by home base where the hitter stands. And I didn't have it because the ball got out of here so quick. I didn't have a chance to iris down to shut down my iris, make it a beautiful picture. But you get the gist of what happened. And that's going to be a base hit for Parker. And it'll go to left field to get picked up. And Parker keeps this inning going along. We're in the third. Rutland scoring eight runs here in the third. They take a 10 to 2 lead. So 
So Quistapace goes to second on the base hit. Remember, he got hit by a pitch. Now Brewer up. He's got back-to-back -back strikeouts, but that was against Cisco. Now he's going to be facing Blanchard. And, boy, he's just not seeing the ball. He's pulling his head out. That's what he's doing. He's swinging like a left-hander with the front foot, going toward the bag, the first uh, third base bag in this case, and turning his head. And, boy, why change the pitches? Because they've all... All the breaking stuff's really throwing him off. He's got an 0-2 count, two down, 10 to two Rutland. They came into the bottom of the third, tied at two all, and then the Placa put a little frosty on the cake with a grand slam home run. That's gonna be followed back. Now see, that was the first fastball he threw in that whole sequence, and I don't understand why he did that. If he had watched the game from the bench, I'm talking about Blanchard, the pitcher, he was seeing Cisco got two strikeouts on the off-speed stuff. He had two strikes himself, Blanchard did on the off-speed stuff, and got lucky with a fastball right there and just missed with the breaking ball. And I'll make it a one ball, two strike count. He'll come to set and the pitch coming in. Eisenhuth, and it's gonna be a foul ball. He hung that one up. He made a mistake, got away with it right there as he left that ball just soft and ever so pretty hanging right in his, uh, right in the inside corner and Brewer turned on it and fouled it off. We'll stay at 1-2. So Garrett Brewer got a piece of that. Tried to go up the ladder with the fastball right there. I mean, that's a different scenario. That other fastball he threw with an 0-2 count was a meatball. This one at least was up and out of the strike zone. It made Brewer try to extend to get it. So Anthony Oplaca behind the plate, throwing two base runners out trying to steal. Had two doubles, an RBI, and now he had a grand slam home run. He's got five RBIs in the game and three hits. All of them for extra bases. You really, like I said, there's probably not a better, well, they're going to have a ground ball, and that'll come right back to Blanchard. He'll flip to first. That's finally the inning, but it's going to be 10-2 Rutland as we go to the fourth inning to play. It'll be Matt Eisenhuth. If you can't remember, it was a long time ago. He was at the plate when Bissell was thrown out trying to steal the base. So Eisenhuth back up there with a clean count now. It's an old count, and Matt Sharon been giving a little pad here. He's up 10-2, to two and he'll start off with a strike. I tell you, with the schedule coming up for Rutland with this weekend, four games this weekend, well, three plus, the completion of that game stop because of darkness going into the 11th inning, they'd like to see a complete game performance by Matt Sharon, and he'd probably like to see that mercy rule come into effect and only have to go five innings tonight or four and a half. Oh, Matt Sharon had set the whole thing up for that pitch and didn't get the call. Not sure if it was a little bit outside or a little bit low, but it looked pretty darn good. He's got a one-two count and see if old Matt comes back with the uh, breaking stuff here. Yep. I was wrong. He came back with just a fastball saying, here you go. I dare you to hit it. And then Eisenhuth took it looking around the outside corner. And that's going to be his fourth strikeout of the game. Now Warner Clark up. He's doubled and scored a run back in a second. And Sharon works at a nice pace. He's got a nice rhythm. He keeps you know, catching fire. He pretty much has his mind made up on what he wants to throw when the catcher flashes a sign. And right there, the ball got by. You know, it was a wild, it was a bad pitch. It got by, so that's why there's a little break. But usually he just catches and fires. Like I said, he missed the Granville game, too, the disastrous game there, because he was at college orientation. And that is a great curveball. Makes it a 1-1 count right now. To the second batter of the inning, Clark. Eisenhuth struck out. Bases are clear. And the pitch coming on from Sharon will be... Picture perfect. And I tell you, a much livelier post-31 dugout tonight than what we saw in Granville when, well, when Granville was here. I'd like to thank the American Legion Post-31 for allowing me to bring you these games on Channel 15. I'd like to thank the people from Post-31 in the concession stands. I'm always making sure I'm well hydrated with just cold water, but still hydrated. So Matt Sharon will go to the windup now, and good idea, just bust him inside a little bit too far, and he'll work it to a 3-2 count now. Will Warner Clark, the first baseman, got it all the way back to a full count. 
Annette, she Dorian, she can pull up. He didn't want the ball to bounce by him, so he pulled up and conceded the base hit, but also kept the ball in front of him, which keeps the runner at first base. A double and a single for Clark. Now, Chris Fainer up. He had a single and scored a run back in the second inning. That's when Bells Falls scored both their runs. And they've got some ground to make up here. But they're off to a good start here. There's a runner at first and just one down. And then there's the breaking ball strike call. And the plaque, don't forget, could change the thinking here on the base pass for Bells Falls. He's two for two tonight and throwing runners out attempting to steal. And they called pitch out this time, but whether they guessed wrong or the runner just held when he saw it, but actually if the runner held when he saw it, then it wasn't a pitch out because that's just a no, that's no holds bar. You get the sign, you're off. You don't think about it. And that'll become a ball. It'll be two balls, one strike. The on deck hitter is Bill Sisko, I believe, because I don't see him go to a position but it could be Blanchard coming up in a spot. The man took his place on the mound. And, yep, Matt Sharon hit him. That was a breaking ball, and that will push the runner to second base, but it runners at first and second with one down. And I believe it's going to be Blanchard coming up. That's a tall figure guy, a tall, skinny guy like Blanchard. So Blanchard will hit in Cisco's spot. And he's got a chance to get Bellas Falls back in the ball game. They're only down eight in the fourth, but they got runners at first and second, one down, and he's a lefty, and he'll put the shift on a little bit. Not a big shift, but a shift. Nice pitch. And in a few lefties that Sharon has seen, you notice how he works that outside corner. He stays away from the lefty. Then it's gonna be Robbie Dorian's ball, and he'll settle in, and Robbie's automatic. He is a gold glover if they gave out golden gloves at this level in Legion ball. But he makes the catch, and that's the second out. Not when the ball's hit the center field or, you know, left or right center, I'm pretty comfortable and confident up here that old Rob's going to get to it. Now Zach Witt comes up with runners at first and second, but the all-important two down now in a 10-2 game. Post-31 exploding for eight runs in the third inning. Capped off by a grand slam home run by Anthony LaPlaca, and they've got a 10 2 lead now. And Sharon from the stretch will pop it in there, and it'll be low below the knee, it'll be a ball. Two balls, no strikes, and the on deck hitter is Medor if they get that far. He also represents the number nine spot in the order, which means the top of the order will be coming around here for Bellows Falls, and boy. I think he committed. I don't know if they're going to ask for an appeal or if I saw the strike come up. Goes two balls, one strike. Okay. That was a good pitch. Matt Sharon is the epitome of a competitor. Great curve. Whether it's football, basketball, baseball, he is a competitor. He's got a 2-2 count right now, and he's looking for another punch out. He's got four strikeouts in the ballgame at this point unofficially. He's got five strikeouts, and the inning's over, and they hold on to that 10-2 to lead. Bells fall, strands two, and still trails. Got a change in the batting order for Rutland. They're going to have Mark Noble step in there and hit in Sean McGuire's spot. McGuire walked twice, scored once when he was in there, and Noble now will get his first chance to swing the bat tonight against Ben Blanchard, who stays on the mound. He came on in relief of Bill Sisko in the third inning. 10-2 to two, Rutland. So Noble is set. The umpire has reported all this paperwork he has to report. And that's going to drop in. Good effort out there. I was, I was trying to pick the outfielder to choose there to watch, go for the ball. All three, all three fielders are going after it. Kyle Mack gave it the best effort, but that'll be a single for Noble. And now Chad Ryan up. So they're going to the bench here in the bottom of the fourth, and Ryan got a runner at first, and that's going to be fouled off for a strike. No, oh, that's Joe Trono. Let me correct that. When he turned around, I could see his number. It's 25, Joe Trono. So Holtman, when he was in there, had a bunt caught by the pitcher, pop fly bunt, then got hit by a pitch and scored. Big breaking ball. 
0-2 to Toronto. Now, Toronto, when he's gotten to play this year, has usually gotten a base hit. He's made contact. Stands in there nice and strong. I like the aggressiveness from the pitch was high. Nice change up there. I said I like his aggressive style of attacking the ball and swinging that bat. So with runner at first, nobody down. Noble with real good speed out there for Rutland Post 31, who's got that 10-2 lead. Good job of holding up on that changeup. And boy, I tell you, Eisenhuth really kind of dogging it right there. Oh, that's very unusual for Eisenhuth. He kind of real lackadaisical and going after that loose ball. So Noble said, to heck with it. I'm going to steal second. So Toronto now, the runner in scoring position in the bottom of the fourth. He's going to pull it foul. And you see old Jeff Brewer able to get down there and get the ball and throw it back out now to the pitcher, Ben Blanchard. Cisco started. Gave up two first inning runs and had a disastrous third inning. And now it's going to be blocked and stays in front of Eisenhuth, the catcher for Bellows Falls. So Trono will step in there. He's worked it all the way to a full count. Three balls, two strikes to Joe Trono, who's hitting for John Holtman. And he'll make contact. He'll go to shortstop. I had to find the ball in the sun, and there's a nice stretch. Runner stays at second. But see, though, by, by not really hustling after that ball by the catcher that allowed the runner to go to second, they eliminated the double play right there. Now Dorian up, he has been hit by a pitch and scored. He struck out in the second, reached on an error and scored in the third. So he scored two runs this evening, and he'd like to get a base hit here. He'd like to drive a run in. Oh, foul tip caught, strike by Eisenhuth. Robbie tried to hold up on that change up, and he did get a piece of it, but you can see him kind of almost still frame his swing there for a second, freeze frame it, like a strobe effect. And it's gonna be strike two, boy, two nice pitches. He's up in front of Dorian, 0-2. Now Rob goes to Rutland High School. And I believe he's going to be a junior this year. Lose track, they grew up so fast. And he's going to have himself a base hit. That's going to roll, and Noble's going to hold up at third base. So first and third, as we'll find Dorian. There he is. He hit it so fast and hard that they couldn't send Noble. Now Matt Sharon was grounded out to the pitcher tonight, singled and got hit by a, or no, he walked, that's right, he walked and eventually scored in that very big third inning. Now Sharon looking to drive in some runs here. Don't forget, they get a 10 run lead and then hold Bells Falls scoreless. And the top of the fifth, we got an early night tonight, that's the mercy rules. You gotta be up by 10, and since it's a visiting team that would be down by 10, I have to just play the top half of the fifth. Now, if obviously, if Rutland was behind by 10, they'd have to play the bottom of the fifth. That's going to be a tough catch looking in the sun, yeah. Well, that's, that is really not his fault at all. That's He's looking back into a just unbelievable sun. And, of course, St. Peter's Field, basically any time of day, but, you know, from noon on, and we're at 7 o'clock right now, p.m., that sun is out right now, and he's looking right back into it. So it'll be an all-one count, and we will have a chance here, Matt Sharon. We'll get another swing in. So Sharon, well, that curveball just hung him out right there. He's lucky that was that high because it just stayed there. Makes it a one-one count. Matt Sharon, a very smart hitter. He'll look, he'll see, and he will drive it, and that's going to do some damage. That's going to, Noble will get up. He fell down. He's going to score a run. And that's going to be waving Dorian in. He's going to touch the bag and come in with another RBI. And there's that 10 run lead. And boy, all the way over to third base with that tremendous speed. There's power and the swing and speed on the bases. It's Matt Sharon with two RBIs. He will have a triple and two RBIs. And now bring up Jeff McLaughlin, who's grounded up to second. Okay, there. I forgot to reset the camera back to home base. 
He's ground out to second base, flight out to right field, and reached on an error. Remember, the first baseman couldn't handle the short hop throw and dropped it. It's 12 to 2 Rutland. And McLaughlin, that's going to be the shortstop. They'll score the run. Boy, they just did get him. That was a close play. But he gets the run in. And it makes it 13 to 2 now, Rutland up by 11. And boy, I tell you, somebody they didn't want to see again tonight. Bells Falls pitching is LaPlaca. He doubled in the first and drove in a run. He doubled and scored and drove in runs in the third. And he hit a grand slam in the third. And my goodness, he's bunting. Ball ball. Oh, I'll tell you what. I know I'm one of the most stunned people here. He looked down at the third baseman. That's just smart baseball. Because he can't get to cycling because we're not going to go long enough tonight. But the third baseman was playing on the outfield side of the bag, and he tried to drop the bunt. You just got to look at what they're giving you and take it. And just got it off the end of the bat for an 0-2 count. Yeah, so the plaque in the third inning had a double and a grand slam home run. Scored runs, drove in runs. Like I said, just you name it, he did it. Now, I've never hit a home run or a grand slam home run, but I bet it's as good as eating an ice cream cone. Oh, boy. Blanchard was half going to go to the dugout on that pitch. I don't know why. It's only a second strike. He would have been going there. <laughs> and again, it's not, everybody's oohing and on, but that's not, what it's, it's not where the catcher catches the ball. It's where it crosses the plate, or if it even crosses the plate. A lot of times those bending balls like that wrap around the plate, but never nick it. 2-2 two, two the count, and the pitch on the way. Went fast, ball now. It's going to be put in play. It's going to be the third. He'll double clutch. He'll throw in. They will finally get LaPlaca out this evening, but it's going to be Rutland coming up with a chance for a, a mercy rule game after five innings. they got a 13-2 lead on Bellows Falls. Matt Sharon back out there on the mound for the top of the fifth, and we've got some defensive changes. Mike Sorelli's gone into third base, replacing Jeff McLaughlin. Mark Nobles replaced Sean McGuire in left field, and Joe Tronos replaced John Holtman in right field. And could be a fall ball. Now I'll get back to who's at the plate here swinging. It's going to be Travis Medore up there, and he's the number nine hitter, then the top of the order, Austin DeLong. And Medora has been up once. He's reached on a fielder's choice. He's also been thrown out trying to steal a base. Matt Sharon's got five strikeouts tonight and has done an excellent job. The two runs were unearned in a second. Yeah, and he helped with an error, but they kind of tightened the ship up there after that and played very well. So no two count now to Medora. And a pitch from Matt Sharon. Good night. Just number six right there. Strikeout number six was an easy one. Got him looking. Two strikes, I'll never understand that. It's like he wants to get on the bus and go home. Austin DeLong up. He has struck out and grounded out. Actually, it was a, it was a bunt attempt, and it was picked up by LaPlaca, thrown to Brewer at first. I think if you had to go back and pick a player of the game, it'd be an easy one tonight. Usually it's a tough decision, but I mean, LaPlaca with two doubles and a grand slam home run, throwing out two runners trying to steal, it would be tough to find somebody who had a bigger night. Like I said, the only thing that could make it better is if you went and got a vanilla bean banana sundae. Mmm. Making myself hungry up here. That's going to be high for two balls. Matt Sharon with six strikeouts and one down here in the fifth. Mercy rule it will apply here. If he gets out of this inning and they maintain a 10 or more run lead, we'll be heading home early. So you can watch Sports Beat Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Matt Sharon getting set to crank it up here and got a 2 2 count now. He's come all the way back from being down two balls to have a 2 2 count. Again, I'll have the doubleheader of Brattleboro for you here at a later date on Channel 15. Oh, it's back to back strikeouts. That was a nasty pitch. Oh. And that's seven strikeouts now for Matthew. Now, Kyle Mack up. He struck out twice. And he represents what could be the final out of this evening's ball game. That's going to be a fall ball. Now, I just had the feeling it was going to be a unique or special night 
with Marina Rotella sang the National Anthem live and did a great job. Just really, I, I really like to see her do it the rest of this season here or at the hockey games or basketball. I think she did a fantastic job and there's nothing like the live National Anthem to get the goosebumps going. Then the placa with a grand slam, you don't see that very often. A legitimate one left the yard. It was one of those where it got in the gap and everybody kicked it around and threw it away. It was out of here. So the 1-1 one, one count, two down, Matt Sharon with seven strikeouts, and the pitch on the way is going to be swung on a miss right at the knee, and we'll have a 1-2 count, and Sharon looking to finish up the game in style. He has, like I said, struck out the first two hitters here in the fifth. He's got seven for the game, and the righty will kick and fire, and just miss outside. He had set the table up for that outside pitch, and just did miss. Couldn't get the hitter to offer at it. That's Mac up there at the plate. Sharon working at that same quick pace. Just, yeah, he did get him. I knew it was close, and he nicked him, and he'll have his first hit batter of the, no, his second hit batter of the evening. That will prolong the game to Isaac Bissell up now. He has singled twice. He's got a runner at first with two down. And again, the outfield, not a drastic shift, but they will go toward the right field line with the left-handed hitter up there. So from the stretch now, Matt Sharon will come to the plate, and He's going to have a three for three night, three singles for Bissell, and that'll be picked up by Noble, and that'll put runners at first and second with two down here in the top of the fifth. And they'll bring up Eisenhuth, Matt Eisenhuth now. He's flied out to right field and struck out in the fourth. And he's got the kind of strength to leave the yard. He's got good home run power. We've seen it in earlier games this season for post 37. And Sharon challenging him with a fastball on the inside part of the plate. And it'll be 0-1 on the swing and a miss. Again, that website for Channel 15 is pegtv.com. You do all those W's up in front of it. And it'll bring you right to the schedule information. And that'll be foul ball back into the screen. And Sharon now with that 0-2 count, it's pitcher's choice. He does have the change up, the curveball and the fastball. We'll see if he'll pull out of his hat here with an 0-2 count. I always like just take a fastball and bring it up and out of the strike zone, see if you can get the hitter to chase right now. you got a couple pitches to set things up like that. I he got him. He will strike out the side, finish with eight strikeouts. That'll be the game. It'll be the mercy rule shortened game. You can see the handshakes around. So Matt Sharon will go all five innings, strike out five, strike out eight, excuse me, have a lot of help offensively from his teammates. They score 13 runs tonight. They win by 11. LaPlaca with two doubles and a grand slam. And he threw out two base runners trying to steal. And a, a good, solid team effort all the way around. You see the handshakes? Get out there, support American Legion baseball action. Support public TV. I always support Munger Vision and God bless America.